Yeah, I need to get on the. Your one is there already, is it? Oh, okay. Hi everyone, welcome back again. Okay, uh, thank you for um, joining me again this week. Oh, hello, Pa. My Pa say hello. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, so uh, thank you for joining me again. So um, for those that this is not your first time, you know I'm going to be doing a polymer clay lesson. Um, for those who are, it's your first time tuning in, welcome. Okay, my name is Annabelle and I will be teaching you how to make some polymer clay accessories. Uh, or sometimes some decorative items, okay? So today will be uh, more of polymer clay accessories and I'm going to uh, show you how to make Chinese lanterns. So for those that are in my um, Facebook group, okay, you have seen some of the posters and uh, maybe a video about um, what you need to make the Chinese lanterns today, all right? So, um, uh, before uh, going and starting the lesson, okay, uh, there's a, we just made a very quick video. So uh, me and a friend went shopping that day to look for resources and uh, we kind of filmed um, the outing. So if you can just take a look at it and um, uh, if there's any comments, feel free to leave your comments, all right? Okay, so um, take a look at the video and then uh, let me know what you're thinking.
Oh, hi everyone. Okay, so um, now we are, uh, you have seen the video, right? So there, I don't know if you kept your eyes open, but there were a couple of surprises, okay? Um, so this being one of them, uh, this, um, for this one, this is the cutter. So I had a few um, viewers who asked me where I got this cutter from. Uh, you might have seen me use this quite a bit for um, during my session to cut the clay. All right. So um, this is called a steel scraper. That's the name of it. And I got it at Brand. Um, but uh, this is one of the surprises. So I will be giving one away since a lot of my viewers have been asking where did you get this from? So, uh, and obviously they um, are finding this uh, something that might be very useful for them. So, uh, to for this giveaway, right? Um, if you can just post, okay, after today's video, go ahead and post um, if there's any previous polymer clay projects you have done, okay, and then uh, post it onto my group or hashtag artsphere dot um, art dot sphere dot nineteen sixty nine, okay, and you'll be able to um, uh, get this cutter. I will choose. Um, one person to give this cutter away to, all right? So please go ahead and post um, uh, in my, on my group or on the Axphere 1969 page as well, okay? Then for the second um, prize, uh, that one will be, it will be another surprise for next week, okay? All right, so for today, we are going to be making Chinese lanterns. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it. So this is more of like an inspiration that uh, I was thinking about. Um, if you Google like Chinese lantern polymer clay online, actually uh, you won't be able to find very much. So what I'm going to do today, um, I will be making something called a polymer clay slab. And then we will cut it out into the shape of a Chinese lantern. So if you can zoom in in the zooming camera, right? Uh, you can see the different color clays. So in the video, so this was what I bought at Art Friend. Okay, I bought white clay. Then there's gold. Um, there's uh, this pinkish pearl color. If you don't have this color, it's fine. You can use um, red. If you don't have gold, it's okay also. Um, these were the colors that I was inspired by for like uh, Chinese uh, colors, okay? That's why I chose these colors. And then just a little bit of black. You don't need a lot of black, all right? Okay, hi Candy, hi Tommy. Okay, I saw some of your comments. So, so thank you for um, joining me again, all right? So for those that prepared your um, clay, uh, these should be the four colors that you have. Uh, I would say the white and the black are the most important colors, okay? Because white will be, you'll be creating like a sheet of paper. And then these two colors in the middle, it's up to you to choose whatever colors you want, okay? Uh, anything that, because Chinese lanterns, they come in many, many different colors nowadays, those paper lanterns we see. So if you don't have gold or red, that's fine whatever um, uh, color inspires you uh, or you think fit Chinese lanterns. Uh, if you have one color, it's okay. Um, but as long as you have one color, at least one color or two different colors, I would recommend because there'll be some contrast. All right. So we will start with our lightest color first um, because we don't want the colors to mix together. Um, if, if it gets on the white, if the white mixes with the other colors, it, it will be quite difficult to remove the clay from it. So we are going to create the blank sheet of paper first. So for this part, you are going to need, you're going to need the roller, okay? So how much white to use, right? Um, if I roll it into a ball, maybe a good size, about two by two cm, okay, of uh, clay. Uh, this is maybe about a quarter of your small block of white clay that you have, okay? So what you're going to do, okay, you're going to take your roller, make sure your roller is clean as well. And then we're going to roll this out into a flat 
something flat, let me move this out of the way. Opa is trying hard to help me zoom in in the background. Okay, so if you can see how I'm rolling here, for those that are doing together with me, okay, you start in the middle, then you roll it towards you, you flip it, and then you start in the middle and roll it towards you again. This will help make sure that your clay is um, of even thickness, okay? So pretty much now I have like a white sheet of um, blank, it's kind of like a small piece of blank paper here, okay? Uh, for those of you that are just joining in, please feel free to like the page and, you know, um, any comments, any questions? Please feel free to ask too, okay? I'll be more than happy to answer. If I'm going too fast, please let me know also, okay? So that um, I will try and slow down so we can do this together, all right? Okay, so basically start in the middle and roll out towards you. When you're happy with the thickness, you can stop, all right? So I'm happy with this, okay? So for those that tuned in last week, um, I also did mention that you do need a round cookie cutter, okay? If you have something round, that's fine. Uh, if you don't have a round cookie cutter, it's okay. You can get like an oval one too. Um, whatever you have is fine. So I also had an oval one, but my oval I felt was a little bit too small, okay? So I was going to use the round one, okay? But I might use the over one this time too, okay? So just to show you the, the two different types. Um, if you don't have a um, cookie cutter, a round cookie cutter, I did uh, mention last time you can use like a bottle cap and things like that. So you just need something to help you kind of trace the outline, okay, of the um, shape. All right, so you can find things that are already in the house already. So this sheet that I have rolled out, I just want to make sure it is big enough because if I want a pair too, okay, I am going to need at least make sure it's big enough for two to fit two of um, this cookie cutter onto it. All right, so this is definitely big enough. Okay, next I'm moving on to the goal. So why I'm starting with the gold first is because um, this pink you see here, the color does tend to come out a bit more. So um, before you start mixing the clays together and things like that, my suggestion is play around with your clay first. You kind of press it a little, roll it a little. Um, you'll be able to see whether the colors come out or not. So when I was playing around with the clay, the pink, actually, the color came out and stained my fingers, all right? So this color actually tends to bleed a little more. So I'm going to start with the gold first. Okay, you can see here I've already rolled it out into a rod. So actually, for the gold, you don't need very, very much. You just need a little bit. I would say maybe like a 20 cent coin, that's the amount you would need, okay, about the size. Um, what I'm going to do, just where my cutter comes in handy. If you have a satay stick or toothpick, it will be quite helpful for this round. Uh, if you don't have that, okay. You can just try using your hands as well, all right, your fingers. But this might take a little bit of delicate work. Sorry, I'm looking for my cutter here. Oh, there we go. Okay, so these are the things I will need for now. I need a cutter. If you have a satay stick or toothpick, it will be helpful. Um, your roller, you have done with it because you have already flattened what you need to flatten already, okay? So you don't need your roller anymore. All right, so for my goal, um, uh, this long uh, rope here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to roll it out. Roll it out to the thickness that you want, okay? So I don't want, I'm not going to make it too long. I'm going to make it quite short. And then I'm going to demonstrate what I'm going to do with this, okay? Then you can see and follow along. Okay, so um, start out in the middle, 
All right. And then I will just take go and I'm going to create a spiral. So what I'm going to do is I am kind of creating these spiral patterns. It's a bit inspired by, um, I think uh, when I was searching online for Chinese patterns, I saw uh, like clouds. It, it looked like clouds, but basically it was like um, spiral patterns that were made to look like clouds. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm describing this correctly, but when I was um, searching for Chinese patterns, that was one of the patterns that came up. Okay, if it's not perfectly round, that's fine. Uh, you can see that I used the satay stick a little bit to help me push um, the clay into place. Okay, so this is what I'm going to create. You can create different lengths and different sizes. Okay, so it doesn't all have to be the same. So maybe I'm going to do another one, okay? So a smaller, maybe a thinner one, and just to create another circle. Okay, just a really gen generic circle this way. All right, another very, um, not as many spirals as the first one, maybe not as big, but a smaller one this way. Okay, so you just want to make sure at some point they connect and touch each other. Okay, so now for the pink one. So I am going to use uh, create spirals out of pink and gold both. <laughs> Alice said she got reason to buy satay now. Yes, please. <laughs> it's a good, actually it's a good reason to buy satay. To, so that you can keep the satay stick and reuse it. Make sure it's clean and not greasy though, okay, when you are when you're using the satay stick. Okay, so I'm gonna use this pink one. So it depends um whether you want more pink or more gold, it's totally up to you. But what you want to do is just roll it into a rope like um shape. Okay, and then you want to roll from one side to the other. A lot of my, uh, sometimes some of my friends also ask me or my viewers ask me why, why when they roll this, it tends to become very uneven and bumpy. That's because we always don't um, roll it in one direction. We always roll it uh, like this part looks a bit thicker, you roll that part and then, you know. But usually it's easier if you start from one side and then you roll it to your, to the other. Um, I'm right-handed, so I always start from the right and go to the left. But if you're left-handed, then it's easier to start from the left and go to the right. Okay? All right. So the next one, I am going to add my pink. Okay. Add my pink. I'm going to use my satay stick to help me. So I'm just going to help push some of it to help me place my pink. There we go. And then I just kind of press it down a little. Okay. So we are just going to keep doing this until we create a nice sheet. So this is actually called um, polymer clay slab. If you Google polymer clay slab, right, you will find many, many different types of patterns online. Okay. And I like polymer clay slabs because it's quite flexible. You can do quite a lot with it. Um, you can cut it into any shape you want and you can uh, create lots of different types of patterns with it as well, okay? And uh, you can also create, um, I, I've used it for several other um, jewelry before and I think uh, you with one slab, one polymer clay slab like that, you can create more than just one pair of earrings, okay? You can create like a whole set. Okay, so my, my satay stick is helping me do the delicate work, okay? Some people um, have better fine motor skills and they can use their fingers to help move the clay in place, okay? So um, then they don't need 
the statistic, but I need the statistic. Okay, so I do want to add a little bit more pink. So this is where you decide what colors you want. This is entirely up to you. Um, and you can, I'm going to have an even, I'm going to try have an even mix of pink and gold. Okay, if there's any questions, please let me know. Um, please remember also, I'm giving away a cutter this week. Okay, this cutter that I'm using here. Okay, I'm giving it away. So, um, if you can uh, share whatever project, it doesn't have to be the Chinese lantern one we're doing this week. Okay, but uh, it can be any previous polymer clay projects that um, whether you have done with me or uh, you have done on your own, tried it on your own, you know, feel free to post it onto the, the page. And then um, I will choose the, the nicest one or the one I'm impressed with. <laughs> okay, maybe we should do a voting. Okay, I'll choose one and then I'll, I'll, um, I'll give it away. All right. So uh, there will be a lucky winner this week. Um, okay, so for this type of poly um, polymer clay slabs too, uh, I know that they can be a little bit, the first time it might not be easy to make, but this, uh, if you practice anything, you know, with practice, you can actually um, do well. So uh, if you are a first timer, and you are a bit apprehensive about making this on your own, don't worry, okay? Uh, you can feel free to contact me as well. I've, had, I've done this um, session with a few viewers already, okay? So um, uh, we have made various things, earrings, uh, or the previous project that I have done online. They, want to, um, they, they wanted a bit more on-hands guidance. So I, um, they, they asked and uh, we arranged a time to meet up and then I was helping them with uh, giving them some tips on what they can do to uh, make it, to make the projects that they're interested in. So definitely feel free to private message me, to PM me or to, um, you know, post in the group if you have any questions and then I'll answer, okay? So, yeah, this month is, um, uh, next month is going to be Mid-Autumn Festival. And then I thought, okay, since we can go out already, right, I thought, why not just have something that, you know, is a little bit celebratory, okay, because we don't have, um, you know, the, the jewelry and things like that to celebrate Mid-Autumn Festival. It's not very often that I um, actually have jewelry to for mid autumn festival. I've tons for Christmas and Halloween and and um New Year. <laughs> and then I've quite a lot of Chinese New Year. I quite a lot of jewelry for that, but I've not made any for mid autumn festival before. So today will be one of those. Today I decided to make. Okay, so you just continue rolling. It might seem a little bit tedious, but don't worry, I'm here with you. <laughs> and I'm doing this with you, okay? So um, this part, okay, uh, after this, you will need to bake it, all right? So uh, you will do the, for baking, right? You just follow what's on the package. Uh, like last time, I did say that um, if you have a built-in oven, then you will need one that is, um, you, you can put it at uh, 130, 120 to 130, okay? And you can, sorry, uh, and you can um, bake it for about 20 minutes, depending on how hot your uh, oven gets. But if you have a smaller um, toaster oven, okay, then you might not want to, to put it up that high, maybe medium to medium low, because uh, it might burn the clay. And especially for white, if you burn white, the color will really be off. So you just want to make sure, okay, that you are not, um, 
that that does not happen. All right, so that one, you can put it in for five to eight minutes and then check it every so often. And uh, once you feel that it's hard, you can test it by flipping over and pressing your nail into the back. And if uh, there's a mark, that means it's not ready. Bake, you need to bake for uh, two minutes longer. Um, and then you keep testing. Uh, if not, there's no mark there. That, that means it's good enough and your um, clay is done baking. All right. So... We are still making the polymer clay flat. Have y'all started buying your mooncakes already? <laughs> I started, I bought mine. I bought mine and there's so many different flavors of mooncake nowadays. I was I was contemplating that day with Opa. I was like, should we buy snow skin? Or should we buy a baked? <laughs> should we buy baked? But the snow skin, there's so many different flavors and colors now. And everything looks so nice and fancy. The boxes look so look so pretty. So I I um I started it was a lot of choices to to choose and think about. I was a bit confused, so Opa was like, just get the easiest one. <laughs> the that that one cannot go wrong. The most basic one cannot go wrong. Okay. So we got mooncake. But quite hard to finish a box because there's only two of us in the house. <laughs> Opa's like nodding away the back. Yeah, we got a lot of mooncake. What are we going to do with it? We got one box, which is four. But for two of us, it feels like it's a lot. So I'm just continuing to roll here. For those that are just joining us, okay. The, uh, what I'm making now is a Chinese lantern, all right? So I'm making a polymer clay slab, just a pattern for the Chinese lantern. Okay, so I am doing the spirals. Um, I'm doing a spiral pattern. There are many different types of Chinese patterns. Uh, but um, I think I chose this one, which I felt that was a little bit easier to to do, uh, because the other patterns I thought the Chinese there are a lot of very pretty Chinese patterns when I was researching for this, but um, they are not that easy to make. <laughs> Uh, so I chose something that was a little bit easier to start off with. Once I um, get a little bit more um, uh, dexterous with it, or I feel a little bit more um, uh, like I, I'm a little, I, I get a lot better at this, you know, it, it takes a lot of practice, then I will probably move on to something a bit more intricate. But this is something that is very simple, it's beginner's level. Okay, you can totally start off with this. All right, basically, you're just repeating the same thing over and over again. You're just rolling things out into long ropes. Okay, and then you are basically creating spirals. Okay, out on the spiral pattern and then putting them on the, um, and then putting them on this white color sheet that you have created. All right. So it is something that is repetitive and you keep doing it again, but it's very simple, all right? And uh, uh, you can't go wrong. Now, um, if you can, if you notice looking at it closely, the, the slab that I've made, right? My spirals are all different, okay? They are not um, the same. Uh, the thickness of each spiral, the, how big, how small is all different too. So you don't have to be too particular. You don't have to make them even. The pattern can be um, random. It doesn't have to be the same throughout. All right. Now, if you have any comments, please feel free to leave your comments. Okay. If you have any questions, if I'm going too fast, please let me know. Or if you need me to explain anything again, um, Please let me know also, and then I will explain. I will explain um, the 
the, the part again, all right? I'll repeat what I need to repeat again. Okay, now it looks like I have a lot of pink. Okay, so I'm going to use more, whoops, my gold is flying everywhere. My clay is flying everywhere. All right, so for the working tabletop, for, um, if you guys have a smooth working tabletop, that would be great. I have a glass tabletop here, so it's pretty smooth. Uh, if you don't have one that is fine, just take baking paper. You can line it with baking paper. Uh, what makes it easier, I realize, is to tape the baking paper down at the side so that it doesn't slip and slide uh, everywhere. Okay, and then uh, you can use that as your working tabletop, your working countertop. Ooh, I'm using, okay. I'm basically doing this. All right, so for those that have a bigger sheet than me, right, you don't have to fill up the whole um, white color slab if you don't want to. Okay, you can just make, remember the cutter that I had earlier on. Okay, so this cutter, as long as, or you, your own cutter, as long as you can fit two of it on the patterns you have made, that's enough, okay? So you just want to make it big enough so that it does that. If it doesn't, okay, then you have to continue creating more spirals, of course, for that to happen. Okay, it doesn't matter that my spiral looks a little bit different. All right. You can create whatever pattern that you want. Maybe I want it coming out from this way and then kind of curling in like that. Okay. So your spirals don't have to be spirals all the time. You can branch out and then kind of do a simple circle. So each time I'm just doing a very small a short length, I think um, the biggest one I did was in the middle was maybe about three or four cm long. The rest were a little bit shorter, okay? So the middle one was my biggest and then I kind of branched out from there. And then I'm using my cutter just to cut the rope into the length that I want. Yesterday when I was trying to do this, right, Opa, <laughs> I was asking Opa, does it look like Chinese lantern? And he said to me, no. And I was quite upset. So I was trying to think how to make it look like a Chinese lantern, all right? So I finally figured out a way. And then he looked at me and was like, okay, I can tell the Chinese lantern. <laughs> so it took me a while, but I'll teach you the technique that I figured out, all right? So but if you guys have better ideas, please feel free to share. Because this is something that I was like thinking of like, <laughs> trying to come up with so Opa was like he was so sure he was like it does not look like one I was a bit upset <laughs> so um, okay last one I think I'm going to do one last one because I'm quite happy with the size Okay, I hope I can fit two. Let's see. Uh, it's just going to be a big round. Okay. So I've done that. And I'm going to check whether I can fit two, so it looks like one, two. Okay, it looks like I can fit it. All right, so if you have a plastic um, cookie cutter like I do, all right, uh, get a bit of corn flour. So if you're using a bottle cap, the plastic kind, this will be good too. Get a bit of corn flour, okay, or um, potato starch or uh, rice flour, rice, glutinous rice flour. 
make sure that it's just a very fine type of flour, okay? Cornstarch. Okay? Hit off the excess um, cornstarch. Why I'm doing this is because the um, polymer clay will stick to plastic. So if you don't coat the surface with um, corn flour, or the other day, if you don't have flour, that's fine. Baby powder is okay too, all right? You can use that, the body powder, the baby powder, okay? You can go ahead and use that. Um, this will prevent the clay from sticking onto your um, plastic surface. So it will come out, okay? So I cut, you find a um, pattern, the area that you like, and then you can cut over there. Okay, just hitting off the excess. And then I cut another pattern. All right. And I lift this. I'm left with the two. Okay, so I have two perfect circles here. Like that. Okay, um, why you use the fine powder as well is because... Um, this one, uh, you can wipe it off easily. Okay, if you use the thicker grains, it might be a bit harder to kind of wipe it off the clay. All right, so even if there's some left or stuck on the clay for the powder, it is also less obvious compared to if you use a very thick grain. Okay, so I have some left over here. So like earlier, um, I said for metal, uh, if you want to... Dip it in the powder is fine too. If you don't want to, it's up to you, okay? First, it won't stick to metal as easily as plastic. Um, but I will show you this over once too because... Uh, okay, I'm going to cut here. And I'm going to cut maybe here. Okay, because uh, just in case for those who have different um, cutters, all right? Okay, so this is the oval. Okay, so this is uh, scrap already. You can put it aside or um, you can use it for other proje projects that you might have in the future, okay? So I just want to make sure it's clean. And then now we are going to work with the black. Okay, so for the black one, you need your roller again. If any questions, please, please feel free to ask, all right? Okay, so for this black one, I always find it easier to um, roll it into a column first like that. And then after that, just place it on the table and then flatten. So uh, I just want it in a kind of a rectangular shape. So I'm going to flatten it this way. Okay, and I'm going to try and get the thickness about the same as my white, about the same, okay? It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but about the same will be good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a rectangle. Okay, this is to make it easier for yourself. So I'm just going to cut and make my corner straight. So I have a rectangle this way. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, this is the part where, okay, when I showed this to Opa yesterday, he's like, no, doesn't look like Chinese lantern. <laughs> so this is the part that is going to make it look like Chinese lanterns, all right? If you have the round ones, I'll start with the round ones first. Okay, you just place them side by side. Make sure that they are even, they are about in the same position. Okay, you're going to cut the end of it away, both together at the same time, like that. Okay, so you're going to cut one end away. And you're going to cut the other end away. Okay, so you have something like this. 
All right, so it's flat and then round at the sides. Same if you have the oval ones, okay? Place them side by side. Make sure they are at about the same. Okay, you can use your cutter to kind of make sure that they are about the same uh, position. They are in the same position, okay? So you can use your cutter to help you line it up by just pushing the, the sides a little. And then you cut off the... Oops. Just want to make sure that they are about the same. Okay, then you cut off the ends of it. So you cut off one end, and then you cut off the other end. All right. Okay, so you have these. I'll start with the round ones first. I'm going to measure, okay, just nice is about the width, my rectangle is about the width, okay? If your rectangle is too big, right, you trim it down some also is about the same width as your lantern. So I'm going to start with my circle one so because these ones are obviously smaller, okay? What I'm going to do, okay, I'm just going to cut a strip of black, maybe half a centimeter, okay? It doesn't have to be too thick or big. So half a centimeter, I have four, so I cut four strips. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then I'm just going to add it here. All right. And this is going to create my lantern. Okay, so this part is going to take a bit of... Um, You're going to have to use your fingers a bit to kind of press it into place so that it sticks together, okay? So we just want to make sure that the polymer clay binds together. Okay, you can use your cutter to kind of straighten the sides a little. To flatten your sides a little because we were using our fingers to press it in place, right? So we want to do that again. So this is why we make sure that the length is about the same. Okay, so we are just pressing the black color. Um, this is basically the, the ends of the lantern, all right? So I'm using the black to kind of make the ends. You don't have to use black if you don't want to. Uh, some people use gold, but because I use gold for my pattern, it will be a bit funny to use gold again. So that's why I use black, all right? But if you use a different color and you want to use gold, that's completely fine too. So I'm just going to show you, I just kind of stick it on the end, press it into place a little. Okay, so I'm just going to use my fingers to kind of press it into place, make sure that it binds together. I'm going to show you a way to make sure that it really sticks together and doesn't come off, okay, after baking. So we are just going to do this. Oh, uh, E is asking, am I making lantern earrings or necklace today? Uh, it's up to you what you want to make. Uh, I'm making earrings, all right, um, because I'm going to be making a pair. But uh, I'm going to have quite a bit of extra, so I might make um, uh, lantern uh, necklaces with it too. Okay, so what you can do, you can flip it to the back. And at the back where the white and black joins together, right, you can just kind of use your satay stick and drag the black to the white. Okay, but this is the back of it, so it's okay if it looks a little bit messy, all right? But this is to make sure that it really binds together, the clay really sticks together, all right? So if you do this, you're basically dragging a bit of the black into the white, and you're creating what you, we call like a mechanical bond with the clay, so it sticks. Now, if you don't do this part, it's fine too. You can try um, baking it, but if it does fall out after baking, right, 
Don't worry, just stick super glue, glue it back together. <laughs> okay, or add craft glue will craft craft glue will work as well. Okay, so you just want to um you can get craft glue from uh art friend. But super glue will work just as well. Okay, so you just need to glue it back together if it falls out. But this is to make sure that it doesn't fall out. Okay. The only thing with super glue is if you use super glue, it might cause a um when it dries, it has this like matte finish. So you might not uh I wouldn't use super glue because it might um affect the fire the finishing of your art piece. Okay, so for this one, it's a bit smaller. So like I said earlier, okay, if it's a bit smaller, you cut. All right. And then there's four. So you cut four. Okay, this one's a bit smaller, so it's a bit more delicate to work with. Uh. So for those who have smaller ones, um, your hands just need to be a bit more delicate, that's all. Okay, same thing, you just kind of press it into place if you have an oval one. Lanterns, there are many different shapes and sizes, okay? So you can um, create the different shapes and sizes. Okay, so if some uh, is too long, just cut it shorter. And then you kind of fix it into place. And then you have another, this other one. Okay. I hope you guys can see it because this one's a bit on the smaller side. Okay, so I kind of just like pressing it down. Okay, so I just place it on top and then kind of just press it together so that it will bind. Okay. I kind of like it a bit bigger because you can see more of the pattern. You have a bit uh, if it's a bit smaller, it's actually a bit hard to see the pattern of the slab you're working on. So that's why I like if my um coat, my cutter is a little bit bigger. If you have something smaller, you can see that the pattern is not very obvious on it. Okay. Same thing, you flip it to the back, pull the black to the white with the sharp end of your satay stick. The other side. Okay, this one, pull black again to white. This is the back of your jewelry, so you don't have to be too um, neat about it. Okay, this is handmade. Okay, and then we are done with the, the beads. Okay, so before putting it into baking, um, if you're all right, you can use a satay stick. My satay stick is a little bit on the thicker side, all right? But um, you can use your satay stick to poke. If your bead is big like this one, um, if your satay stick is a bit big, it's okay. It doesn't matter. So, but I'm poking it uh, after the black. So just before the black. If I poke on the black, it'll be too close. Um, it'll be too thin here and it might crack off when I'm making the jewelry, okay? So I don't want it to be too close to the edge when I'm making my hole. So this goes for all um, jewelry. Okay, so then I am doing the same thing for this one at the bottom, in the middle. Okay, then I create the hole. I just want to make sure the back is just as big as the front, okay? That's done. One. Okay, then two. I have to make for the other side as well. Okay. And then for this side. And then after this, it will be ready for baking. Okay. 
So I poke the hole for this one. Now for this one, my starting stick is too thick. Okay, if you have something smaller, that's fine. Go ahead and use a toothpick. Okay, um, you just want to make sure that you're able to put the jump ring through. Okay, but I have this steel one, so I'm going to use this steel one that um, I have. I don't want to use the satin stick because it's too thick for a small bead like this. Okay. So you just want to poke holes. Now, uh, I'm poking holes on both ends because I want to create a look. Okay. So I am going to show you All right, so I'm done. So all this can go in for baking. But after you're done baking, right, I'm going to show you what you need to make the earrings for next week. Okay? So the because I can't show you the baking process for half an hour online, all right? So um, today we're done with this. Go ahead and bake. But after you're done baking for next week, right? You're going to need your pieces again, okay? Uh, I have tassels. Um, you can buy them from Art Friend or Spotlight, okay? That's fine. Or order them on Lazada. That's what I did, okay? Uh, tassels. The color, okay? I chose pink color because it matches with the pattern I did. But you can choose whatever color you want. This is going to be dangling earrings. So, we are going to have the ear hoops or not ear hoops i'm sorry the dangling earrings this way like that okay you need that and then you need jump rings make sure your jump rings are big enough for the bead that you have made okay so you will need four jump rings because you want to attach your tassel to the bead as well um if your tassel is very big you might need um two for six jump rings so one uh, pair for the tassel itself and one pair for this and then we can connect everything together okay the other thing you will need are pliers okay this is to just help you um handle the the accessories that you're going to be attaching all right so a sharp nose plier and a flat nose plier so you're going to need those to help you attach everything together. Okay? Uh, yeah, so we are going to be making this next week. Next week, if there is time, okay? So I will make this because this connecting everything is quite fast. I am going to do um, rabbit. Mid Autumn Festival is all about the bunny, right? So we're going to make a bunny charm. Okay, and then we can turn that you can turn that charm into a necklace or bracelet or things like that. So for making bunny, right, you need white. Rabbits tend to be white and pink. This is the clay you need to prepare. Baby pink. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see the baby pink. White, baby pink. Okay. Uh, if you think this pink is too light. You can take your pink from this week. You can prepare a bit of this too. We will mix it together to create a darker pink. Okay? So this is what we will be doing. And a little bit of black. So we we'll use a bit of black for the eyes and the whiskers and things like that. Okay? So just make sure you get all this um, prepared for next week. Okay, if there's nothing... Oh, bunny charm. <laughs> Thanks, Jasmine. Yes, the lantern earrings. It looks nice with the tassels. This is inspired <laughs> with the tassels, okay? Lanterns tend to have things hanging. Um, okay, and the bunny charm, uh, please look forward to it next week, all right? Because that can be keychain or necklace or anything like that. So if there's nothing else, this is the end of my session. Thank you for staying tuned. Please remember to post whatever you have done, okay, onto my group. And then I will uh, be giving away a cutter, brand new cutter. Okay, I'll be choosing one of your pictures and then um, the winner will get a brand new cutter, right? And then please stay tuned next week because there are more surprises coming your way as well. So thank you and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.